Hi there team, Geology Professor Sean Wilsey with you here today. We're going to be doing a brief update on some of the seismic unrest underneath Kilauea volcano in Hawaii. Look at some of the data that's been coming in that I've been looking at over the past couple days. We do have a portion of the national park there that's closed due to some of the seismic unrest. So this is a bit no, no, noteworthy and newsworthy, I suppose. And let's get right to it and look at what the, the data we have so far. So here we have the latest run of earthquakes. And so you can see here the Big Island of Hawaii, composed of five overlapping shield volcanoes. The biggest, of course, is Mauna Loa here. But the earthquake that's been the most active in historic times over the last few decades is, of course, Kilauea. And this is a seven day, so a week's run of data on this earthquake or on this uh, map here showing earthquake activity. So you can see, let me find the right zoom in level here, the main caldera here at the summit, uh, volcano village over here. And then this is the beginning of the east rift zone. And so you can see this this cluster, this swarm of earthquakes that we've been monitoring since about the 27th of April. So for uh, nearly a week or so now, we've had a strong seismic signal coming from this upper east rift zone here. And then sort of a secondary signal right along the south caldera wall. And then a few scattered quakes in this area here, what's known as the Kauai Fault System, which sort of links together the southwest rift zone and the east west rift east rift zone over in this region. Uh, so these are the earthquakes we've been looking at. The largest quakes here are about a 3.3. So 3.3 was our largest quake and that was on April 29th. So a couple of days ago, about four days ago. And then lots of twos, ones and lower, but you can just see the sheer number of quakes in here. Um, this is about total on this map that I'm showing right now, almost 400 earthquakes over the past week, which is a notable increase in seismic noise based on over what we've seen in the past few months in this region. Um, so we'll come back to the earthquakes here in a second. Let's go to the update from the USGS. This was from yesterday, Wednesday, May 1st. Uh, so not erupting as of right now and just an increase in earthquake activity that began on April 27th in the upper east rift zone and on the south side of the caldera. Um, the depths are around two to three kilometers and as of the writing of this uh, update around 270 earthquakes have occurred over that tw over a 24 hour period uh, down a little bit from a peak. I'll show you the graph here in a second that will go through some of those in some detail. Um, let's see what else here. So lots of earthquakes happening. Uh, ground deformation continues to occur as well. So there's a strong inflationary trend or uplift uh, in the summit and caldera region. Um, and it's so, so the bottom line here is it tends, it seems to be indicative of some sort of magma migration and movement in the subsurface. Uh, possibly will end up as an intrusion, possibly could be an eruption, and that's why they're being a little bit cautious in the national park there. Let's go right to the analysis portion of the update. At this time, it's not possible to say with certainty if the increase in seismic activity will lead to an intrusion or eruption in the near future, or simply continue as seismic unrest at depth. The Upper East Rift Zone is currently being pressurized by inflation of the main magma reservoir beneath the southern end of Kilauea Caldera and south of Keanakakoe Crater within the park. The Upper East Rift Zone is reacting to this pressurization. The current intensity of seismic swarms suggests that formation of a dike beneath the Upper East Rift Zone or Kilauea Caldera is a potential outcome. However, if a dike is in place beneath the Upper East Rift Zone, there is a much higher historical probability of it resulting in an intrusion where magma remains below the surface than as an eruption where it breaks through to the surface. In either case, dike emplacement from these shallow depths can take place with very little warning. Both intrusions and eruption can cause significant surface cracking that can render roadways in the area impassable. So uh, they're in a heightened state of unrest. Uh, they're obviously monitoring the situation closely. We'll have to see how this plays out uh, over the next few days. But basically, in this Upper East Rift Zone, this could lead to some of the magma in that shallow reservoir uh, being pushed upwards towards the surface. It probably, more likely than not, won't make its way to the surface. That's usually the case more often than not, is you end up with a dike or a magma intrusion 
versus an eruption, but at this point we can't rule out either scenario. And you can see that the earthquake activity is mainly concentrated between uh, Mauna Ulu here in the south, this shield volcano that erupted in the early 70s, uh, and then up through this chain of craters here up to Keinakakoe Crater, this crater here right near the, the edge of uh, Halimaumau, the big crater here near the Kilauea's summit. And so that's the area of concern. That's where the earthquakes are showing us where to focus on. And if we were to have an intrusion or possibly an eruption, it would be most likely in this area. But there is this smaller secondary cluster over here that is worth monitoring as well. So pretty interesting stuff going on there. Looking at some of the other monitoring data that's come in over the past week, you can see the earthquakes over the past week. Um, and just the clustering right there around the summit and on the southeast flank, upper flank of Kilauea crater. Um, and so there's the earthquakes in terms of location and they're color coded by, for depth. So the reds and oranges are very shallow. Yellows and greens are sort of moderate depth earthquakes and then the blues and if there was purples, those would be the deeper ones. Blue ones over here near Pahala, those have been um, researched and seem to be related to the actual hotspot conduit. So those are very deep earthquakes coming up from the magma source. And then from this area, it either feeds Mount Aloha which is off the map to the northwest here, or it feeds uh, the Kilauea area here. Same, um, same data set, but looking at a cross section through this map, again, you can see those deeper Pahala earthquakes around 30 kilometers. And then this recent um, cluster of quakes that's sitting right in, anywhere from you know, a kilometer below the surface to maybe as much as five or six kilometers with a few down here around 10 kilometers. Uh, here's a nice graph showing over the past week earthquake rates per day shown in the blue bar graph. So you can see it's ramped up and it really um, got folks attention on the 27th of April. And then that remained high over the weekend, the 28th, 29th. It's dropped back down a little bit we're over here on May 2nd, but of course the day is uh, only part way through for the day over in Hawaii. It's still kind of early there, so this bar graph will undoubtedly be taller by the end of the day. But yesterday, for example, there was about 300 earthquakes. And so it does seem to have dropped a little bit from its height, or highest point of a little over 400 earthquakes per day. Um, but it's still elevated over what we've seen in the past. The red line here just shows the cumulative seismic energy uh, from all of these quakes. So you can see it really spike here around the 29th when a, a lot more earthquakes were occurring and possibly larger earthquakes as well. And then that trend continuing up. Uh, another plot of earthquake depth over the week. And so you can see, you know, it wasn't a whole lot happening on the 26th, but then right around the 27th, that's when this, this more intense swarm and cluster of quakes began. And it's more or less continued uh, without really abating much here uh, in the last four or five days, hence the, um, the concern. Looking at some of the GPS or ground deformation data, if we look at a um, couple here we could look at, let's go down to, this one might be the easiest to read and more similar to what we see with uh, if Iceland or Iceland's GPS data. So here's the past um, year or so at Kilauea summit. So an upward trend of these blue dots is things moving vertically upwards. Uh, we got a scale here in meters and this is from a station located on Kilauea's at Kilauea summit. So you can see in general a, a strong inflationary trend, upward movement, uh, and then the big drop here that was that intrusion that we had in February where some of the magma actually moved into the southwest rift zone, created a dike. There was no eruption, although at the time there was definitely some concern and the possibility existed that there could be an eruption. Uh, so that movement of magma from Kilauea's summit storage area into parts of the southwest rift zone dropped the elevation down. Uh, but since that time, you can see it's, it's resumed inflation. So currently we're sitting over here at about the same elevation uh, an uplift that triggered the intrusion back in February. So a very similar pattern to what we saw leading into that here. Um, and then this is, goes back even further over the past five years and you can see some of the um, movement here. And then here's that most recent one right here that happened in, in February. Um, so looking at the earthquakes over time, 
So remember we have the, the Kilauea summit here, the caldera, uh, the southwest rift zone, which is a area where the rocks are being extended and opening up and we periodically get magma pushing through those cracks and resulting in eruptions. This is all primarily due to the fact that Kilauea is not supported well on its south and eastern flanks and so it has these rift zones. Um, it's buttressed by Mauna Loa on the northwest side uh, and so these rift zones have opened up and these are conduits where, that the magma can take that easily allow the magma to make its way to the surface. So we've seen plenty of eruptions here over the last few decades from uh, both the east rift zone, well primarily the east rift zone, but even going back a few decades in the southwest rift zone as well. So let me take the rift zones off and at least the east rift zones and let you see where these earthquakes have been occurring over the past week or so. So we'll animate this with earthquakes over this past week. So we'll be starting here on about the 26th of April, uh, which was on, what day was that? That was Friday, so this past Friday. And then here comes the earthquakes on the 27th, and you'll really see them start to intensify here in the uh, Upper East Drift Zone. Now we're into April 29th. Again, a few happening on the South Caldera Wall as well, but most of them occurring here, this strong cluster in the East Rift Zone uh, going up to today, May 2nd. And I've got this set to show um, the quakes disappear after a while. I can also set this up so you get to see uh, all the earthquakes uh, in, in, in total if you'd like. So you, there's a couple different ways you can, you can show this. So we can go back a bit here and watch these quakes come in, but then those dots will stay there. Just how you want to look at the data. Either do you want the dots to go away so you can see the new ones, or do you just want the new ones overlaying on top of those old ones there, so you get a better sense for the total amount. So again, strong um, trend here that's mostly parallel to the East Rift Zone with these quakes. So, um, so let's look real quickly at how this is affecting uh, the National Park. So they have closed, in my last update, they had part of the park closed, the Helena Poly Road, and then some of the backcountry cabins, but they've actually extended that closure now. And now, uh, as of Monday, this past Monday, April 29th, they have also closed um, the Chain of Craters Road. And so let me let me throw the roads on here. So the Chain of Craters Road, which is here, um, let's take the earthquakes off. Uh, this road that heads down to the coast, um, some really spectacular sites here. Now this road is pretty much completely closed from uh, the Crater Rim Drive here all the way down. So they've got closures in that area currently. Um, and also a few other places that are closed as well over here on the Southwest Rift Zone. Uh, there's a Ka'u Desert Trail, and you can't hike in beyond, I think, some of these cones here. You can't go any further uh, to the east on, on those, uh, those trail systems. So Park is being uh, proactive about trying to um, manage this uncertainty with the situation that we have there. So, um, of course, if anything happens, you can always look at the USGS site. They do have some webcams. There's a webcam for uh, the summit area. Um, but most likely we won't see any activity happening there. The more likely webcam that might catch something, um, I'm not even sure, I guess it might might be uh, the Mauna Ulu cam, but I think it's looking not even in the right direction. So I'm not sure if any of these webcams would necessarily catch any activity if it were to take place. Because this is down at Pu'uo'o, further down the East Rift Zone, and the Mauna Ulu cam uh, based on what I'm seeing here, I think it's pointing at Mount Ulu, so it's looking down the rift zone. Um, and this one, I'll have to figure out where this one is. Maybe this is the this is the camera to to watch. So, but certainly the USGS will do a good job of providing these daily updates, uh, letting us know how things transpire. But as of now, it looks like we might see in the future. Uh, possibly a magma intrusion, i.e. a dike that's formed in the upper east rift zone. Uh, lesser chance, but possible that that actually uh, turns into an eruption in the upper east rift zone. Or the third option is we just continue to see this seismic signal and energy 
without any sort of magma movement into that region. That's a possibility as well. But I'll keep you updated as best I can here. Hopefully these are helpful. It's, it's always helpful to me to just uh, look over the data and then to articulate it as best I can and verbalize it actually sort of helps me cement it in my brain as well. But thanks for joining me. Think, appreciate your support of the channel and all things related to geology education. I'll be back with you with another Kilauea update uh, when the situation warrants it. So thank you very much for your time and have a great one.